Oh no. We're on the side of the road. This is usually fairly frightening. Hey, what's up? Today I'm gonna to be doing the pillars and the halo. So stay posted. And if you haven't seen what I've already done, I've done the rear cage already. If you haven't seen me build this already, go back on my YouTube and there's two episodes. So I have to make the halo now, which is a bar that goes from here to the front where the windshield is back and then around to the top of the hoop again. So it's basically, a circle around your head that's why it's called a halo so now i need to make it and to make it i need two 90s so a 90 here to go to there and then a 90 back so it needs to go if the sound effects help at all this is usually a pain in the butt from what i understand because you need the angle right and you need to get this pitch because you want the mounting surface to be right here on each side just about right, right there and it has to clear your head too so it's got to be way up in there you got to get this angle right because you have to get this contour into the pipe because the pipe's flat right and it's got a mate into there i've already got a really good start on the halo and basically what i did was this was a pre-bent cage so this piece was about this long so i cut it and then I made my grooves with all my markings and all that good stuff. Just like I showed you in the first episode, if you haven't seen it, go see it. But yeah, basically you just, you just gotta play with it, go back and forth, back and forth. I didn't show that because I just needed to get it done because this was one of the most intricate parts because these angles had to match each other perfectly. There was no playing around. It just had to be done, so I did it. So right now I'm gonna put it into the, where the hoop is sand off where it's gonna mate after I mark it, tack it in, and then I'm gonna start on the other bars, which is the fun part. I'm just gonna clean up these joints here, make sure I have a nice 45 in there so I can really penetrate the steel on both sides. And then I'm ready to put it in. Actually, before I put it in, I am going to paint it because recently I've been forgetting to. It's a lot easier to paint it before it goes in, other than the like the an inch towards your joint because it'll obviously bubble the paint once you get some heat in it from welding it. But it's way easier to paint it, so I'm just going to paint it now, sand it up, paint it, done. Then it's going to go in. Okay, she's all painted up, and now I'm just gonna grind off the spots on the hoop. I've just gotta sand this clean, same with the other side, and then I'll be good to go after the paint dries. All right, I'm gonna put the halo in now. So I've got a piece of wood here and a strap. So I'm gonna strap it to the back of the hoop, to the front of the halo, and it'll hold it on because it's got grooves like this. And we'll see how that works. I really hope you saw that hit me in the face two times before it got sitting there stationary. It's in there. So I've got it held in by a bungee because it's grooved, it'll hold it, right? And then I've got the, the height 
with a piece of wood and that's exactly where it's got to sit. I just have to measure and figure out how far this way or this way I need to go. But other than that, I'm pretty well ready to go. So the rules here are the cage has to be two inches higher than your head. So you can't, you can't have your head touching your cage, right? Because if you get in an accident, you're gonna smash your head on it. Not good. But you have to imagine the cage being around you and say garbage bags, since I like garbage bags so much, <laughs> wrapping it in garbage bags. You have to be able to sit in there with your head inside of that. You, your head isn't allowed to protrude out of the cage due to you don't want your head to be the first thing to hit the ground if you flip. So you have to put your helmet on and you have to assume that your helmet is gonna be on if you're in an accident and that your helmet is inside your cage by two inches. So basically, if you can fit two inches around your head without it touching the cage in your perfect seating position, you're perfect. And then you have to make sure that the cage is actually around you and your head is not protruding out of the cage and I've checked all that already and I'm basically ready to tack this in. I had my seat in. So yeah, I'm just gonna tack this bad boy together and then I can move on to the bars here. All right, I'm just gonna throw a tack on each side of this pipe and then I can move on to my other bar. Okay, the halo is in, and now the most important part is the A-pillars. I think that's what they're called. Yeah, they go from here, down through the dash, or around the dash. If you really want to, you can bend it around the dash, but I think that's kind of not doing the whole point of being safe. But anyways, and then down to your floor. I've already had this boxed in from the last cage I made. This thing is bulletproof. I made it with all three. 16 steel so again i've got to come from here go through this little part of my dash that used to be a vent and then down so i need about a 45 degree angle here so i'm going to start writing down measurements from here to here and then here to here keep in mind this is a very very difficult spot to mate a, a steel bar because this is round and it's also on an angle because you don't want it like over here because that's kind of like in the middle where your viewing spot is. I'm on the passenger side right now, but still you want it tucked away nice. So I want it like mounted about here. So that's quite the angle to get, to get like with just a grinder. So we'll see how that goes. Obviously we're gonna do it mint, but we'll get there one step at a time. So I'm gonna measure and then I'll show you my measurements. As you know, I'm a sick drawer. So embrace this beautiful drawing. This is the tube that is bent on the piece of paper that it needs to be. I don't know the exact angle, so I'm gonna bend and, to, and go back and forth and try and find out what angle it is, because I do not have a protractor of any sort. Anyways, there's the box that is welded to the floor already. Here's the pipe, and then the pipe goes up to an angle, and then I measured that from this part to the start of the angle is 26 and a half. So I'm starting there and then from the bend to the tip where my actual halo is, which is that little thing that isn't proportionate at all, 46 and a half. So that's my starting point. So I'm gonna add everything. So I'm gonna add an inch to the bottom measurement and a couple inches to the top. So that I have more room to play with the pipe so it's not short because you can always make something shorter but you can't make it longer. So I'm gonna start there. I'm gonna measure out my bend and start bending and I'll show you how I bend as well. My bend starts at 26 and a half inches up. So here's my pipe here. So 
so here's 26 and a half right there. If I bend it there and make a little bit of a mistake, my pipe's too short. So I'm gonna add an inch and a half, which is 28. I've already marked it there, but that's where I'm gonna do my bend. And then if it's long, I can cut it. If it's not, perfect. And then my total length was 46 and a half, following the pipe. So I'm gonna measure up 46 and a half and cut it, and that's my only cut for now until I bend it. There's my measurement. Now it's time to cut, and then we're at bending. I'm actually cutting it at 49, just in case of coping it takes a lot of material off. And I don't want to do this two or three times. I want to do this once. Before you put it in, you have to mark where the center of your bend needs to be, and then you can put it in. Look at that cut. That's just with a grinder. It's almost like I knew what I was doing, but I actually really don't. Okay, here we go. I'm going to be putting my mark towards my left right now. So it should be right there. As you can see, there's my line. Okay, we're gonna be doing this in steps so it doesn't get kinked. This is a hydraulic press, so it can be relieved and pressurized very easily. I just took it out of the bender, and as you can see, there's nothing wrong with that. That looks like it came out of a mandrel bend machine. So I'm gonna put it in the car and see if that's the angle I need. I think I need a little bit more, but I'd rather do less and then do more later. I just checked it in the car and I do need to do a significant amount more. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but I'm going to do it over the same spot I've already done because it's already formed so now I can re-bend it and it won't kink as well. I just test fit it and it's looking good. That's a great start. So now I'm going to start coping this end to try and get it mating up to here. I'm not gonna cut any length off. I'm just gonna start going at it so I know that mistakes are made and stuff like that. So keep it long. And this is a really, really hard joint here. So I'm gonna keep it long, take a bit. It's basically just getting the form. And then once I get the form, just keep making it smaller until it fits. Yeah. It takes time, but whatever, gotta do it right. And I only got a grinder. Okay, I'm gonna get a time lapse going. I'm gonna start coping that pipe to my halo. It's very hard. I'm basically gonna take a line and follow the contours of the halo and start there, but add a half an inch because it's a circular motion. Okay, I got my marker. And here's my new pipe right here, all the way down to the box and I'm going to follow the contours. So this mark I just made, I started close to the tip. That's a good starting point, but since this surface is round, this is going to hug that. So I can't really go to the tip because if I go to the tip, it's, it's gonna make my pipe short and I'm gonna have to go longer because this point will mate around that it's just this won't because it's got to go around here. This is really, really hard to explain, guys. I'm doing my best, but I'm going to start here. So that is the mark that I saw right here, but I'm going to go a half an inch and start there and then start forming it because I, ha I know this is going to be long, but not much long. It's, it's really hard to explain. I've done this before and I actually ran out of pipe and had to make another one, but so this is the original mark I was talking about. Then half an inch, I'm gonna cut there straight all the way through and then start coping it.
Okay, I'm at the point where now I'm ready to weld it in. I've got it fitting perfect. It fits mint all the way around. And I am excited about it. I've just got to take the paint off where everything's gonna be welded, and then I can start welding it in. Same with the other side. The other side's just chilling in there, ready to go. Again, I was about to forget to paint these bars, so I'm gonna paint them up real quick. I've both done. Uh, where's the other one? Where's the other one? Right over there. But yeah, I'm gonna paint them up real quick, and then I can sand off that spot, and then I can tack them in. Finally, I'm stoked. Got it marked where I gotta sand, so that's all I gotta do is get this fresh down to good steel, and then I'm good to tack her in. Okay, on the driver's side, I got the underneath welded and it started to frustrate me. So I'm gonna move to the passenger side. I'm very tight to the roof of my car. So it's very difficult. So I'm gonna have to modify my TIG welder to actually fit in there. I've thought of a way to do it, but I'm just gonna go over to the other side, tack that one in, do the bottom and then move, move forward from there. Okay, so right now I have a rod that I'm going to bend and put around my tube. So when I have my actual TIG welder up there, I can move it about and get into where I need to and not have to focus on this. I just need to get some fill in there and it'll be good. As long as she's penetrating on both sides, we're, we're ready to go.
I just took my sunroof out and my handy dandy garbage bag wrap off so I can see the top of the cage here. So I'm gonna be able to weld in there no problem, which is sweet. Wells are looking sick. This is the A pillar one. Goes up, nice and tight to the actual car. And then there's the boys right there. Sweet, looks great. So now I'm just gonna move to the other side and start welding that. I got everything cleaned up and I've got my uh, windshield all covered so I can paint. I'm gonna throw some paint on this stuff so it doesn't corrode or anything. And then I can move to the other side. All right, I think I'm gonna get this top of this hoop where the halo meets. I'm just gonna weld that guy in. I just painted this all up. It's looking awesome. So yeah, I'm gonna weld this up. Looks like a tough spot to get to, but I'll do it. Okay, I'm gonna do this halo where it mounts to my hoop. So I just bent up this little piece of steel because I'm so tight there. So I'm just gonna get up as high as I can from this angle and then I'm gonna go from the other side and then continue on. All the way around looks dope. Now it's time to paint it. And this guy looks great. I just gotta do a little bit of sanding, but. It looks awesome. Look at that, like, I'm so happy with that. That looks great. Now doing this front A pillar. Nice. Got a bit of a run. It's kind of hard to film and paint at the same time. Not a big deal. I can just sand it and do it again. Now it's time for me to weld on the passenger side. I'm just gonna get right into it. And then I'm pretty much ready for door bars and then the cage is done other than gusseting. And that'll be a completely other video. They're the welds. Look at those. Hell yeah. Sick. All right, that one's done. Just gotta finish up around this guy. And then I can move on to my door box. The hardest spot to get to is right in the gooch of the pipes here. So that's gonna be fun. Very good job. Looks awesome in there, but it's always a good time. So I basically just have to Get the smallest chunks in I can and then just go up and down.
Okay, I did some painting and it's not working out right now because my shop is too cold. So my paint is looking like puke. Like I am so frustrated right now. So I guess I'm gonna have to wait, heat up my shop someday and then paint it. So that's, that's later. I don't care right now. So I'm going to do a drawer bar. And I have already kind of figured out what position I need it to be in. So for the positioning, it has to be in between my shoulder and my elbow when I'm grabbing the steering wheel. So that's not much. So my shoulder starts about here and my elbow is about here. So it's just at the top of my shoulder. I'd rather have it high so it protects my head if I hit a wall or something. I'm going to hop in and show you. Okay, I'm sitting in the car and... I'm going to put the camera beside and my shoulder's right here. So as long as it's underneath my shoulder, in between my shoulder and my elbow, which it would be like this, right? I'm grabbing the steering wheel, shoulders up here, elbows down there. See what I mean? So I might actually lower it just a tiny bit because it's honestly a pain to get in, but um, it needs to be highest as possible in my mind to keep me the safest yeah it's a pain to get in and out but that's why i have a removable steering wheel so i can get in and out so yeah i've got my door bar set in here so now what i'm gonna do is line up the other side so i'm looking at the other side of the halo and i'm going until i can't see it so that means i'm perfectly straight i'm gonna do it again perfectly straight perfectly straight and then I'm gonna make a line down that I'm actually gonna start at that point because it'll definitely be long so if there's any issues I'll be able to shorten it and then it won't be too short so I'm gonna mark it and I'll show you how I'm gonna mark it. okay that's a pretty good line I'm gonna start with that and I'm gonna mark the center And I'm also going to do the same to the bottom, and I'll show you the measurement afterwards. Alright, there's my mark that I made in the car. So now I'm going to do what I always do and add a half an inch and mark half an inch. And that's where I'm going to make another line. There's my original crosshair, and then there's my new line. So... When I'm looking directly overhead, I take the intersection point on this guy and then go to the horizon. And then same with here and go to the horizon. And that's what I cut. I cut this guy, guy right here and this guy right here. And then that's my starting point for my coping. Alright, there you go. As you can see, I cut that, cut that, and then if you follow the cut all the way through, then you get the same thing on the other side. So now I'm just going to kind of uh, shape this so my piece will fit in, and we'll start there. And after a couple of minutes, that's what she looks like just by following my lines. And boom, perfect fit all the way around. So now I'm just gonna throw it into the car and make sure, and make sure that this line is correct. And then I can do the same thing, add a, a half inch, make my line across, go snip, snip, sand, sand, and then, that's it. Then it can go in. If that's the case, it obviously can be a big pain in the butt if you're not a pro, but I'm not a pro, so we'll see how it goes. Um, regardless, you just gotta do the best you can, and if it takes two pieces, you just take two pieces. It takes five pieces, it takes five. You just gotta do it right. All right, here's my original mark that I made on the second end, 
And now I'm gonna go out another half an inch, just like I did on the last one. Original mark, half inch mark. So now I'm gonna do the same thing as before and go out to the horizon. So I need to put my face in the middle of the pipe and then just go to the horizon. And then this is the line I cut and same with this one and go right through. Okay, I got it fitting pretty good. There's still gaps and everything, but I need to test it on the car because both ends are done now. Sick! Just look at it. Look at it, would you? Just, just look at it. Holy macaroni and cheese ball. It fit. First try. I don't know how. Might be skill, might be luck, might... That theory does work. Cutting it, a half inch big, but having lines to the horizon and then just kind of tweaking it with your um, grinder and it will fit if you made the right marks and um, you have to like do it by eye, right? It's all messed up because you're doing it with the grinder and everything, but it can be done with just a grinder. So now I'm going to throw my seat in and see if this is going to pass the specs on it passing through my shoulder and my elbow. Okay, the bar's just sitting on there and I've got the steering wheel and everything. I'm gonna hop in there and see how it feels. Okay, it's gonna be hard without knocking it over. Whoa. Whoa. Ah. Damn it. Okay. I mean, to be completely honest, I think it's too high. I think it's too high. But I'm gonna throw the steering wheel on, see where my shoulder is and my elbow. Okay, got my wheel on. And this is how I would be grabbing the steering wheel. So, as you can see, my shoulder's right here, and it's just at the top of my shoulder. So, it is legal, because it has to be in between your shoulder and your elbow. So now I need to figure out what's gonna be the most comfortable. Huh. Hey, I found a six spot for it. I was originally going over this part on the seat and it was sitting about here, right there. And now I dropped it to there. I didn't have to cut anything. I just had to put it underneath this bump on the seat. I didn't think it would fit, but it fits mint and it's perfectly in between my shoulder and my elbow. I grabbed the steering wheel right here. I'll put it on. I drop my steering wheel up here, click my steering wheel on, steering wheel is on, so grabbing, perfectly comfortable, then follow my, my forearm and my elbow is underneath the bar. So the bar is in between my shoulder and my elbow and that is exactly where it's supposed to be and it feels comfortable. That's exactly what I want. I want to feel comfortable. I want to feel safe. I want to feel that I can still drive and the bar's not in the way, you know what I'm saying? Cool, the copes are great. Like, I'm actually getting really good at coping. So basically, all I've, all I've done here was I drew a line, there's my old line of the horizon of the bar. And then you make a mark in the center of the line and then you draw lines to the horizon that's marked already so and then it, it hugs the bar so then you cut it out and then you make all your grinding and everything and that looks sick it's the same thing down there it's dark sorry i don't have good lighting but it's looking dope look at that so now i'm going to take it out paint it up do all that good funky stuff and then it's going to be ready to put in Actually, before I paint this guy, I'm going to do the other side as well and paint them together and then let them dry overnight and then install them because this is literally touching my seat. So when I install it, 
Like I usually just paint them and wait 20 minutes and then install it carefully because I don't paint the ends. I don't want to get my seat full of purple. So I'm just gonna do the other side, get that one fitting mint, then paint them both and leave. You know what I'm saying? Bam! Now that's a good fitting piece. Same with that guy, it's harder to see, but he fits great. So now, that was like a quarter of the time it usually took take me. Now I have the hang of it. I actually know what to do and I'm confident that it will fit. Like pretty much I went back once and tweaked it and it just sat right in there. And as you can see, it's the same height as the one on the other side, which is just above that uh, harness bar. Same with this one. It's just a little bit high, higher than this bar. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, the scales are definitely coming to me, which is perfect timing because I'm almost done. No, I'm just kidding. I've done the cage well. It just took me a long time because I didn't know how to do it. So I had to learn how to do it all, right? Like, like I'm, I'm in love with this stuff. I love, I love doing it. I love learning. I love it all. So I'm gonna take these bars out. They just fit in there so good. Like it, it, I have to like force them out. Anyways, now I'm gonna paint them up and then I'm gonna weld them in. It's gonna be so sick. So close to being done. Okay, it is time for me to weld my bars in. They dried overnight. So now all I've got to do is clean up where it's mating to on my halo or hoop. Sorry, I always mix them up. And then I can tack it in on both ends and then weld her in and then just paint everything up. And then that's a wrap for this stuff. So I'm stupid, stupid stoked on having this cage finally done. There's gonna be more on this cage, but it's just gonna be about gusseting and making the roll cage stiffer for decreasing body roll in the actual whole car. So that'll be a different episode, but this is the final episode. The roll cage will be done today. I just threw the door bar on the driver's side in. So now I'm gonna mark it and then sand out the marks all the way around down there too. And then I can tack it in. There's my line there. Just gotta sand that all out, just like so. I'm gonna be doing both sides at the same time and having them tacked in on each side and then welded at the same time, just so everything stays in straight and this is the last thing, so I want it to be done dope. Both passenger and driver are set in. Now it's time to tack. I'm gonna do tack on each end and then do four all the way around. Same with the front driver side over there. And then it'll just be welded in all the way. I'll get the time lapse going.
sweet. All the welding's done. Looks awesome. Both sides are all done. So now I'm just gonna sand up a little bit more. I've already sanded quite a bit here. This is stuff that I've wanted to repaint because it got bumpy because of the heat. But yeah, I'm going to paint this whole bar here and there. And same with the other side, just the two weld spots. And then it's pretty much done. Damn, the cage is done. Holy, turned out really nice. I have a little bit more painting to do, but I am freaking happy with that, that's for sure. Door bars are mint, I can't wait. So that's it, the cage is done. I plated the floor, I put the hoop in, I put the rear bars on with the plates. I plated the floor for the hoop. Um, I did my seat harness bar. I did my halo. I did my A pillar bars and door bars. It was a lot of work, guys. I hope you watched all of it. If you haven't seen the first episode, it's in my YouTube. No problem. Just go onto my videos and it should be the num number one. Start at number one. Then there's two, obviously. And check them all out. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was very hard though. Like there were some spots that were really difficult, like underneath that bar right there. That's as tight as it gets, guys. And same with like doing this, where the A pillar meets. Coping that and making that fit nice was very difficult. But again, I did it with a grinder and that was it. A grinder and uh, a Jimmy um, pipe bender. So it wasn't even, it was actually for pipe. It wasn't a tube bender. So it's not meant for the application because tube is a different diameter. But, gets the job done. This cage is mint. This cage is mint. I wish I could see it without the crap all over it with garbage bags, but that'll be it for the spring, right? Gotta keep her nice and tidy. That's it for the cage. That is the safety stuff to get an eight point cage. Now, the next episode I'm gonna come out with, I'm going to gusset the cage, which makes the car more rigid. So the cage is in here and it's meant for if you roll over and it'll help it from not collapsing on your head and everything. But if you gusset it, gusseting is when you attach the cage to the body. So I'm gonna attach the top of the hoop to the roof, these rear bars, to the side, A pillars, right to the A pillar um, part on the car, and um, maybe even the halo up there. But, so basically it makes the car like three times more rigid for um, twisting or um, bending in any way. It makes it way more rigid. So that's definitely on my to-do list. That's going to be the next series I got going. So have a good one. Like, comment, subscribe. Watch the first video and have a good day. We'll see you in the next one.